Hello and welcome to UK Gaming Network, I'm Zoidberg and if you were a reader of Amiga Action or Games X magazines the chances are that you'll have probably read one of my reviews back in the day. This is the re-review where I'm going to take a new critical look at the games that I covered during this time. In each episode I'm going to take one game and replay it and see how it stands up under today's gaze. T today's game is Video Kid, an original title developed by Twilight and published by Gremlin Interactive in 1992. Video Kid is a scrolling shoot-em-up, or cute-em-up, as it was dubbed by the publisher at the time. In it, you fight your way through five different themed worlds, each based on a style of movie, after your character is sucked into a broken video recorder. It was the product of a small developer called Twilight, who are probably best known for 1993's Alfred Chicken. Twilight had made their name developing budget titles for high-tech software, based on Hanna-Barbera characters such as Top Cat and Hong Kong Fooey. The success of these titles gifted them the opportunity to, to work on a number of arcade conversions and movie tie-ins for top publishers such as Ocean Software and US Gold. Video Kid was their first original game, although it definitely took its inspiration from their work on the Amiga version of Mega Twins. It had the same crisp cartoon style courtesy of graphics by Peter Tattersall and some bouncy music from Sean Conran. The gameplay, however, took its inspiration from the likes of Mr. Heli, allowing the player to fly freely around the screen and shoot at enemies from both left and right. Despite being published by Gremlin Interactive at their height, in a period of time that saw them release the likes of the Lotus Trilogy, Utopia, Hero Quest, Premier Manager and Zool, Video Kid failed to make an impact on the sales charts, failing to even make the top 10 on its week of release. Does this lack of success make it an undiscovered gem? Let's take a look at my original review and find out. My review appeared in issue 36 of Games X from January 1992, and the game's artwork also appeared on the cover. It was an exclusive review, and it shared the Game of the Week accolade with another game that you may have heard of, called Another World by Delphine Software. Both games received 4.5 X's out of 5, and for Video Kid, I awarded it 17 out of 20 for last ability, 16 out of 20 for gameplay, and 17 out of 20 for its presentation. When mentioning the game's cartoon appearance, I brought up the similarities to Mega Twins, although I also mentioned that this is a very different type of game. I was very impressed with how smooth everything is, and how there is no slowdown whatsoever, even with a screen full of enemies. One criticism that I had was the difficulty, where I stated that an experienced gamer would get through the game in a very short space of time due to the fact that the enemies all appear in the same place every time you play. Overall though, this didn't affect my enjoyment of the game. If you're searching for a decent blast with an appealing look and feel, then seek no further than this. Now let's see if I still feel the same way about the game by giving it a playtest. What I found is that this is actually quite a tricky game to um to get working on the A500 Mini. Uh, the WHD load files seem to be beset with uh, graphical glitches. Um, so using the ADF files, which makes the loading times a lot longer, seems to be the only way to do it. There is another way to play it though, and that's um, by Antstream, which if you've not heard of Antstream, is a uh, good retro gaming platform where you can uh, as the, as the name suggests, stream older games to play on your PC. So as you can see, visually this game doesn't really look like a, um, a shoot 'em up at all. It's, it is more of a... Uh, it gives off more of a cutesy platform vibe. Well done. But none of the levels are particularly long in this game, which is, um, which is quite nice, certainly in the early stages. Uh, that's what that's what you tend to want from a game. Some things that just ease you in. But that kids is a VHS cassette that you saw being put in there. Um, ask your dad about what one of those is. That's how we used to watch movies before before Netflix was a thing. All of the enemies and power ups will all appear in exactly the same place every time you play the game, which makes it easy to uh, to learn the patterns. Although uh, the flip side to that is that um, when you get to a level for the first time, you have no way, it, there's no real way of uh, predicting what's going to happen or what's going to come next. 
I think it's unquestionably a nice looking game. The uh, sprites are all very clear. The scrolling is smooth. So we've got a nice, nice colour scheme. I say the glitching that you can see is, is because I'm playing it uh, uh, via Ant Stream, so, so I'm streaming it. Well done. What I do find is that the is that the way your character moves around the screen is a little bit, a little bit loose. There doesn't seem to be any resistance. Closest game in comparison to this one is, um, on the Amiga is probably Blood Money by DMA Design, which was released by Cygnosis. Um, but in that one, you controlled a helicopter, so you were restricted by the speed of the vehicle. Every single one of those blue power ups that you pick up is um, an increase in power to your fire. See, it's these giant knives that come up out of the ground that you have no way of anticipating, and the, uh, it just. It's a very frustrating thing. I think we are approaching the uh, end of level boss here now. <coughs> so yeah, I'm not being attacked by a giant owl. This is the difference between Western developed shoot 'em ups and Japanese ones, really, is that there doesn't seem to be any discernible pattern to the attacks here. It all seems to be a little bit random. Yeah, if this if this was a Japanese game, everything would be there for a reason, making it easy for the player to actually avoid. I didn't have very much health left there, but I did it. So, video number two. Oh, I must have got an extra life at some point, because I thought I was on my last life there, but no. I still got an extra life when I finished the level. Doesn't seem to be a huge amount of power-ups in this game, though. That's, that's one of the disappointments. Now, with no shortage of decent side-scrolling shooters on the Amiga, it's... Um, it's, it's a testament to the developer that they've made something that actually stands out. Because most of them are obviously piloting a spaceship of some kind. And I think the closest uh, arcade game that I can think of to, to this is probably um, Namco's Sidearms, which I which I did play quite a lot of because I remember that being in uh, being available to play in in my local game shop when I was when I was in, in school. In the end, though, I can actually see why this wasn't really a massive massive sales success. <clears throat> Because although it's although it's a, a well-made game, it's not really a um, it's it's not an exciting one. It's it's fairly bland in the in the grand scheme of things. Now this is the level that looks very similar to Mega Twins, which was of course the game that Twilight developed literally just before this one. Game over. So yeah, so the other levels are like you got a sci-fi one, you got a horror one. The horror one's actually quite cool because the horror one, um, everything is in black and white apart from the character that you control. <coughs> but like I said before, the um, the magician opening level is actually the best one of the five levels in the game. Um, so that's so that's Video Kid. It's uh, it's it's not brilliant. It's not rubbish either. Uh, sort of bland middle of the road side scrolling shooter not not really much else to say about it so uh, let's uh, let's get to the summary this is a very difficult game to summarize as while there's nothing particularly wrong with video kid there's nothing very memorable about it either and i did in fact have a hard time recalling it before starting to make this video as shoot em ups go it's a very playable one and the idea of controlling a kid flying through movie themed worlds is initially very appealing too. The worlds themselves all look very nice and the sprites are all very well drawn. 
The limited colour palette doesn't help though, as there is quite a lot of brown on screen throughout all of the levels. It's disappointing that there's no in-game music, as the tune on the title screen is a nice toe-tapping number, and the fanfares that introduce each level are fun too. All you're left with as you play is the repetitive tap 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 of your weapon fire, which is functional, but boring. Games like Project X and Disposable Hero have set a very high standard for side-scrolling shooters on the Amiga, and while there are many games worse than Video Kid, I simply wouldn't be able to give it more than a 5 or a 6 out of 10 if I reviewed it today. Quite how this managed to receive the same score as an all-time classic like Another World is beyond me. Thank you for watching this episode of the Re-Review. Make sure to check out the playlist if you want to catch up on all the previous episodes. Like, subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on the next one, of which there will be a little musical tease coming up shortly. You can find me over on Twitter, at UKGMZoidberg, if you want to ask me anything about Amiga games or what titles I'll be covering in future episodes. Your support for our channel is always massively appreciated. Hopefully I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye for now.